Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another video for you all today. This time we are going back to Russia to take a look at a competition called a Middle Social. Someone in the comment section told me to take a look at this, and really it was the organizer's idea to basically judge social dancing. And really, that is another way of just saying doing a Jack and Jill. You guys know what I look for in a competition that's a Jack and Jill format. I look for uh, control, timing, and creativity. Now, I know as a dancer coming into Lindy Hop that it's pretty easy to do choreography. And in fact, many times, choreography and performances are the thing that attract people into Lindy Hop. But ultimately, it's the social dancing that keeps them doing Lindy Hop. I gotta tell you, one of my bias perspectives when I judge social dancing is I want to see if the dancers can make social dancing look as if it's choreographed. That's incredibly impressive, it's special, and it feels real when you're able to have two people work together, they don't know what's going to happen next, but yet in a way it still kind of seems organized. That's magical. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one and I can't wait to give you guys my big fat bloated opinion. Let's go. Go. So normally what I look at when these kind of competitions start off is I want to see who's just not jumping right into doing movement, but really paying attention to what's happening in the music. And so far the couple with the yellow dress and he's got the hat, they started off the right way I like to see, which is nice and calm, building a little bit of personality and taking your time. My goal is to see who can convince me to do Lindy Hop if I didn't do Lindy Hop and I'm watching this for the first time. I like that. Yeah, so far looking good, this couple. Now I like so far that I can tell this leader has a lot to say in terms of personality, but I can pay more attention to the follower because he's not overdoing it. Yeah, very good. Good control, taking their time. Very good, very good. Stuff like that's not easy to lead. Um, Cause sometimes your partner gets too anxious and you just don't have the timing enough to make it look good. Good timing. Yeah, very good.
Good timing. Yeah, and timing is so important and incredibly underestimated. You can pick your nose in time and win a competition just because you're allowing the audience to see something that is a dramatic break from what they're normally seeing. All right, so everybody gets a round two. Let's see what happens now. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Right, they have to break. There we go. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun and incredibly competitive. There are some really, really good things that I saw here. And uh, there's some nu nuanced um, commentary that I'm going to have to add for some of these dancers. But great job. Let's talk about it. Woo! Wow, guys. This was really special. It really put me in a reflective, pensive uh, emotional state whenever I can see good swing dancing. I love this. I really do. I think about the hard work that was put in by the original swing dancers, Shorty George and Maddie Purnell. They were the first ones to really take credit for the swing out and setting this whole thing on fire for all of us. And I, I love to see the fact that these dancers are in Russia almost a hundred years later and showing so much respect and honor and love for this art form. I, it's just overwhelming. <laughs> but I tell you guys, I, it was really tough for me to judge this competition. It really is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. In this case, all of the dancers have the knowledge of the dance. They have an incredible skill set and personality. But the hard part is being able to know when to do certain things. And that is the wisdom aspect that some of these dancers had more than the others. And my wish for all of these dancers is to get to the point where their unique personalities are worth emulating. I wanna see more of these dancers jump onto my top 10 Lindy Hoppers list of all time. That's something that we need and the future needs because quite frankly, we don't have that many people contributing to the 
art form in a way that's memorable. We have that when it comes to the musicians. I can put on my CDs and I can tell you who the musician is, how they contribute it to the art form, but I can't necessarily say that in abundance for swing dancers. And I, I gotta tell you, these dancers are on the verge of crossing that river. There's one thing to imitate your favorite dancers for such a long time and stay there. Because if you stay at the level of imitation, you eventually hate those people that you're imitating because you can never do what they do the way that they do it, or you can never be them. And so I encourage you, if you're one of those kind of dancers or you're just imitating people, eventually you're, you're gonna have to keep pushing yourself because you'll get to that point where you stop or you actually blossom into something that we haven't seen quite yet. And I really hope these dancers do that. Let me get in by telling you guys my third place uh, couple. I really love this third place couple. What I loved about them really was everything. And I wish I would have seen more of them. That was the hard part about their uh, performance. And this goes to the couple with the, uh, she has the yellow, sh the yellow dress on and he has the hat. When they first come out here, you can see their personality, it's beautiful. They're individuals holding hands. And when the timing is right, they end up linking together here. And here's where, the, this is what I like to see, is what can they do with sharing one source of energy and emphasizing what it looks like at two different parts. We have a male, we got a female, we got lion and lamb. What are they doing with the energy? And so I gotta tell you, I'm a bit disappointed. I see them more being isolated and standing in one spot and less moving around with the energy. Now, of course, a lot of that has to do with the timing of the music. I like that last bit right there that they did. That's a real hard transition to actually go from something that is just, you know, based on what you're seeing and then back into something that's based on a feeling. That's really hard to do. And I, I wish I got to see more of them moving in concert together, sharing one energy source. I felt like it was a bit truncated and they, there was more of an emphasis on timing with the music. And that could have been to the detriment of the band. The band was playing different things in, in, in time where the dancers were trying to mirror that. And that sometimes is the downside is you try to mirror exactly what's happening that when you hear it and it doesn't come off the right way visually. And so the best parts is when they were actually moving together. And I wish we could have seen more of that because clearly they have the knowledge. But in this case, the wisdom that they used to mirror the music for me didn't quite work. I actually wanted to see them moving as a unit more. Well, the beauty of their, their movement is, you know, he's a little bit more controlled and it reminds me of another dancer that I really appreciate. Uh, I believe it's uh, Mike Roberts. Yeah, it's another one of my top 10 Lindy Hoppers of all time. Such a great body type, not super tall, not super short. It's right in the middle, but they have a really good use of their body, knowing how to move their body in rounded circles. And I feel uh, this dancer, the lead at least, has that ability. What I love about this follower is she has so much energy. She's willing to explode visually with the energy using her hair, using the, the bending of her spine to, to elongate the movements when he was um, using the swing out type shape. I just found that their chemistry was beautiful to me. One was round, one was, one was straight, and they moved together. And I think that's the beauty of Lindy Hop is when you have two opposites coming together to, to make something beautiful. So they were my third place couple. Okay, now my second place couple was a real surprise for me. It was a real surprise. This was the girl she had, yeah, I don't know if it was yellow or not. Let me double check. Yeah, she she had like a tan dress, yellowish tan, and he had like a maroon pants with a ponytail. Here they go here. What, what I love about them is like the other couples, they're coming out, taking it easy. But immediately I can tell something's different about how they are connecting with each other. There is less stretch in their body. So the movements are a lot tighter and there is a lot more surprises when it comes to their movement because they're able to move and stop more quickly. Now, what I love about this is they had the timing like the, the third place couple, but they had less of the isolations. Yes, here are the moments where they're just isolated in one spot and here's when they kick back into moving 
and you can see there's not a whole lot of vertical rhythm, meaning that they're bending their knees a lot. Everything is linear and stretchy and tight and energetic. And that was like a burst of energy. I didn't expect to see a burst of energy like that because it really contrasted the other couple that I saw. And that's important to me. It's incredibly important. I, I say it all the time. I came into Lindy Hop because of the social dancing. I can understand why people can come in because they saw a performance and it, it blew them away and then they wanted to learn how to move that way. But what I typically see is people will get in because of a performance, but they'll stay in because of social dancing. So when I can see a dancer social dance in such a way to make it look like it is a performance that's choreographed, I'm super impressed. I am super impressed. And I think this couple really embodied that energy level that I like to see. I think that follower may have been Dari. I don't know who that leader is. The leader's kind of movement reminds me of some of the taller dancers that I appreciate, good friends uh, in the art form, uh, Todd Yannacone. I, I love to see that type of body type um, moving with their partner and with less elasticity. Typically, I see more elasticity where there's lots of bouncing in their movement. Um, nothing wrong with that. It just means that the moves tend to be a little bit more predictable and you can see them coming because there's more stretch. The follower takes a little bit longer to respond to the movements. When it's less stretch like this couple, it's tighter, there's more slides, there's more syncopations that um, allow the dancers to move and stop more. So as an audience member, I felt more surprised and I felt more engaged wondering what was gonna happen next. And I like that. Uh, now I gotta tell you my first place couple. I really loved this first place couple because they moved the most together. All of the couples had a skill set. Most of them were able to organize their movements in ways that fit the music. Now in this case, there were some benefits and drawbacks to that that really disrupted their ability to move and flow together. This couple didn't have that. They came out first and this is the couple with the he, she has like a white dress on, he has the orange jacket. I really liked them, I really did. And, and one of the reasons is, is look, there's one consistent tone I see here with the leader. I don't see rushing. I see the follower mirroring that type of energy. Okay, I see them both doing some, some energy levels that match each other. I can tell immediately that the leader has more to say visually than the follower, but he's disciplining himself to humble himself to work with the follower with her personality right if he would have blasted and just start doing all this crazy stuff on top of the follower it would have looked as if she was the problem in this situation and that's not really fair i i really love to see that this leader is t staying calm using his skill set here where it's loud to kind of invite his partner to say hey you want to be kind of crazy with the feet with me but not too crazy i love that just enough where we can see their personalities and they didn't do a whole bunch of stopping. I really like the fact that this follower seems to not be intimidated by the lead's personality. Generally, I tend to see followers kind of abdicate who they are to basically copy the energy level of the leader. And I don't see this follower doing that. I get to see her still keep her personality, but yet join in with the leader's suggestions to do certain footwork. And that's really cool. That's the authentic part of Lindy Hop that I like to see. Again, the lion and the lamb. I wanna see opposites working together, compromising together to make something beautiful. And they, and they did that. One thing that I wished I would have seen more is I wanted to see a little bit more diversity in the energy level. This is something that is totally subjective for me. And I'm telling you guys, the, the subjective thing right now is really subjective. I like to be moved emotionally when I see social dance. I wanna see unpredictable things. And that, that may not be their style, that's okay. But when I'm judging the competition and it's a certain format, these this is the filter that I have. And, this, and I'm pretty much the only person that's gonna tell you they'll, their filter. And I'm gonna be as consistent as possible in my judgment even if I may not like certain dancers' style and choice of movements. But in this case, their choice of movement in terms of the tone of it was a bit too much the same. Now, I will tell you the timing and the creativity was better for me than the other couples that tended to stop a little bit more, but I will say I wish there was a bit more variety with the tone. Look, they're still my favorite one, my favorite couple, primarily because I get to see the essence of what Lindy Hop is all about. You get to see 
Shorty George and Maddie Purnell reincarnated through us dancers today and them working together. I think it's amazing and uh, that's my pick. So there you have it. Who do you think is the winner of this competition? Give me your opinion. I wanna hear your opinion and why in the comment section below. If you haven't started yet, start social dancing. It's one of the greatest things you can do. It made me wanna leave all the art forms that I've been doing for years. And I switched over because Lindy Hop just really hit me and I thought I must have that power to be able to move with the person and improvise in such a way where it's special. And so if you want to learn how to do that, I encourage you to check out my school. I've got a school online. I've been doing it for years. And I basically have demystified how complicated this dance really is. And so I provide you with the basic ingredients so that you understand what's objective and what's subjective so that you can kind of develop your own personality and style without feeling like that's being undermined. And at the same time, you get to learn all of the different things that have been shared uh, in the Lindy Hop history to help you become a better dancer. Check that out in the description below. So again, let me know your guys' thoughts. Who do you think is the winner of this competition in the comment section below? If I don't hear your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.